The environment for med tech funding has changed dramatically in the last five years. Uh, I've been doing this for 25 years, 18 years as an entrepreneur where I uh, have raised over uh, $200 million for various companies. And then the last seven years, I've invested about $150 million in startup and, um, and mid-stage uh, medical device companies. What we've seen is that there's been a major contraction in the amount of money that is flowing from limited partners to venture capitalists. The National Venture Capital Association says that that number is down about 60 to 70 percent. So it's a dramatic reduction in, in the amount that is available to fund early stage and later stage med tech companies. But I think we're starting to see some improvement. I think the FDA has gotten the message that that uh, their unpredictability is killing innovation. And we've started to see some companies like uh, Neotrack that uh, the FDA has reversed their position on, on PMA and given them a 510K. So that is encouraging. Uh, but at the same time, it's been hard for early stage companies to raise money. I think we're gonna see this continue to improve. This is an industry that has gone through many cycles. This is definitely the toughest. But uh, I think we'll see that, uh, that large med tech companies will continue to be acquirers. They're not very good at innovation. So those companies that do get funded, that develop products successfully, are gonna be in a very strong position. The survivors will do well. We're seeing some very interesting trends that have evolved to fill the 60 to 70% reduction in traditional venture capital. Uh, some of those areas that are expanding are corporate uh, investment. Uh, most of the major medical device players have uh, a corporate venture group where they invest directly in companies out of their business development arm, but that's probably been the biggest impact. We've also seen angels come in and help start companies, but that probably isn't uh, going to be sufficient to get companies all the way through to approval and acquisition in most cases. Uh, we're also seeing with the corporate group some very innovative structures like a build the suit where a, company, where a large corporation will invest in a company with an option to buy and give that company sufficient funding to get to that milestone. Uh, we're, we're seeing groups like uh, government-backed organizations such as EDBI, which is the Singapore uh, government, and Enterprise Ireland that are trying to attract companies to their countries and providing incentives to do that. Uh, we're seeing uh, organizations like Fogarty Institute that can provide some limited funding for companies to get up and get started, providing them a, a, a place to uh, have access to an engineering lab um, and to get the company up and running. It's about survival these days, and if, if a company is unable to, to bring in a large uh, you know, venture capital syndicate to finance the company through multiple rounds, uh, the, the various uh, uh, alternatives of corporate capital, uh, government-sponsored uh, organizations, uh, angels, are all good in helping companies get up and get started. But it, a lot of it depends on the size of the project. If it's a you know, five to $10 million raise, then you may be able to get there without traditional venture capital. But if you have a traditional medical device company that's gonna take somewhere between 30 and 100 million, uh, then ultimately you need to get the project as far as you can on that, uh, on that seed funding and, and then reach out to venture capitalists to take the company the entire way.